I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this is Outside My Window. Digby Pines Golf Resort and Spa dates back to the early 1900s. Mr. H.B. Churchill left the people of the small town in awe. He shared his plans and promising conveniences and amenities that would attract high society from near and far. Now, his vision for a three-story hotel was talk of the town, as it would boast electric lights, a baggage elevator, refrigerators, cold and hot running water, and the most modern conveniences of the time. In 1965, the Nova Scotia government purchased the hotel and changed its name to the Pines Resort. In 2019, the property was purchased by Bissim Halef and Glenn Squires in partnership with the Bear River First Nation. In 2021, the property commenced a wide-scale renovation, which be completed in phases. With us today is Charles Otter. He's the current VP of Resort Operations. Charles' combination of international and domestic hotel and tourism experience has allowed him to build his career spanning several countries and several continents. Now, we met Charles at a recent networking event in Yarmouth, and what brought Charles here to our area is a whole story in itself, but we'd rather him tell it. Charles, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Good to be here. So, listen, eight countries and three continents, so how... You know, it's a long story, I know, but, uh, you know, give us the abridged version. How did you come to uh, uh, Nova Scotia and to Digby and to uh, uh, operate the uh, Digby Pines? Let's go back, um, right back to the beginning as a boy of 18 in New Zealand, because that's my home country. Well, Canada is my home country now. I started as a bellboy at a hotel to make money to take myself through university. And I loved the hotel industry. So after that, a couple of years later, I joined New Zealand's first five-star hotel and did all my food and beverage training, and then went on to build a career in sales and marketing in hotels. I quickly realized that I was, I was doing what I loved. I loved the whole hotel industry, and it was, it was working really well for me. I got a transfer to Australia, um, and I landed in Melbourne for two and a half years, and by chance, they sent me on a business trip to the Middle East, because the Australian government was working with the hotel operators and the travel agents and the rental car companies to promote Australia as a tourism destination to the Middle East. And those countries included Saudi Arabia, um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, um, Muscat, and different countries. So off I went on a business trip sent forth with by my company. I was in sales and marketing at the time. And by chance, I was at a cocktail party and this woman said to me, do you really like visiting the Middle East? Are you enjoying your business trip? I said, I love it. She said, would you like to come and work in the Middle East? And I said, sure. So I trotted back to New Zealand and told my boss, I said, I think I'm about to be offered a job. And she said, well, Charles, um, go with the grace of God. In effect, is what she said. She said, you've worked hard. I know you want to build your career. And she said, you've given the company, because they had transferred me, you've given the company great years. And she was totally supportive. So off I went to Dubai, and um, I had an amazing year in Dubai. It was just when Dubai was opening up as a tourist destination. But I then wanted to continue my career, and I ended up in um, applying for a job as Director of Sales and Marketing in Moscow in Russia, and that was way back in 2000. So that started a whole career with Radisson Hotels Worldwide, and I spent time in Russia, Ukraine, Latvia and Slovakia over 14 years. I think I had about 13 moves and some of those moves were consultancy general manager jobs and some of those were permanent positions for several years at a time. It was a pretty amazing career. So that's in a nutshell. So then I was in I was in Russia in St. Petersburg and I was on a two-year contract and that was coming to an end and my mother was dying of cancer in New Zealand. So I went home to spend six months I said I'd go. Said to my brother, I'd go for six to twelve months and um, look after her. Well, that was very short-lived time, but it was a pretty amazing experience to be home. And by that point, we there wasn't much of an estate to tidy up, so I took off to our home in Mahone Bay, in Nova Scotia. We'd bought that home twelve years ago before I went home to New Zealand as a holiday home, and how we got to Nova Scotia um, and. Is a, I was in Kiev in Ukraine, 
And our second biggest client was the Canadian Embassy. And there, the embassy was just down the road from us. And they used to have, on a Friday night, every second Friday, they used to have the Maple Street Pub. And that's where all the foreigners got together and got to know each other. And that's when Canada and Canadians became our best friends. Um, and my partner and I were talking about, you know, we're looking for somewhere as a base, maybe somewhere to retire, maybe a holiday home. And they said, why don't you look at Nova Scotia? And that formed our love affair with Nova Scotia. So blow me down. A few years later, we literally bought a house, um, did our research. And I mean, there was must have been four or five people from Nova Scotia at the Canadian Embassy. And they just kept telling us the virtues of Canada and why we should go. And we found this beautiful property um, just on the edge of Mahone Bay and fell in love with the area. And it became our holiday home. Now, that was 12 years ago. So it became our holiday home for five years ago. And seven years ago, mum died. And um, we thought, let's go, to, let's go to Nova Scotia and see what we can do with it. We didn't have a plan. Um, we turned our lives upside down. And we arrived in um, Mahone Bay to live. So how did how did you end up with the Digby Pines after that, or or what did you do once you, once you arrived in Mahone Bay? Okay, so Mahone Bay, as I said, we arrived without a plan. We opened a restaurant that many of your listeners might know. Um, it's called Oh My Cod. Now, coincidentally, we sold that um, just before COVID, um, and that was that was a wonderful hobby restaurant. Along with the restaurant, um, I ran a bed and breakfast for two years. I did a project with the municipal governments of, no, of the South Shore. And I did a bit of work for Atlantica Resort and some work for the Tourism Industry Association of Nova Scotia. But I got, I got to the point, you know, we sold the business and I really wanted to go back into hotels. So there was a job um, in Toronto and coincidentally, it was with Radisson Hotel. So I was a perfect fit for the position. Six months into that, it was the pandemic. So the company was really good. I got transferred to Windsor, Ontario for the two years, and I looked after 10 hotels and one restaurant. But I always had my own personal mantra, and I was always said to everyone, if I could find the right job to bring me back to Nova Scotia, I'd come back in a heartbeat. Well, blow me down. Um, an acquaintance of mine said, why don't you reach out to the owner and just send them your resume? Now, to this day, I still don't really know if there was a position or not, or if it was just a helpful suggestion. But it was one of those moments in your life where you knew the person was saying, why don't you reach out with actually an acronym for rip the Band-Aid off and just write him a letter. <laughs> so I wrote him a letter and sent my resume, and I got a phone call half an hour later. And that started the process of, would you come to Digby Pines? Would I be interested? And... That started our communication, and about three months later, I found myself here in July this year. You know, I can imagine that being a VP of operations of a reverse, of a resort like that in the best of times would be challenging, you know, coming through the pandemic, coming out of the pandemic. So what are some of those uh, uh, hurdles that you that you faced, that, that you had to deal with? Well, this... The first thing is I'd rather be known as the general manager, even though I've got this great fancy title, I need to be accessible to my staff and guests. So, you know, whether it's Charles in charge or I'm the GM or I'm just the boss, it's a little bit more, I try and be a little bit more understated because it does sound a bit formal. The challenges are that, look, Nova Scotia in general and tourism in general, even in the world, has boomed this year. And a lot of it's been through Atlantic um, Canada, which has driven the tourism, which has been amazing. So there hasn't been as much challenge to get the business. Our challenge now is going year round and opening up the resort, you know, 365 days a year, which we've never done in the history of its 93 years. So that's going to be the challenge. Um, certainly the, the business has boomed this year and we've had a really, really good year. Um, not too many staff challenges because the hotel um, did recruit foreign workers and we've got some Ukrainians as well. So we've had a mixture of, We've had a really multicultural staff this year, and they've done that before I arrived. So full credit to the resort and the owners for the vision. Um, so we had people from Mexico, Chile, Colombia, and then we've had some Ukrainians because the Ukrainians are in Cornwallis. So because we do, we have about 150 staff on site at the moment. The challenge is now going to, it'll be a quieter season for over the winter. It'll still hopefully be busy. Um, so we're just working all those challenges out at the moment. 
So with that in mind, Charles, it, you know, who are you catering to? Like, what's your draw when it comes to Digby Pines and Resort? Is it still, you know, the the higher class clientele? Or, are you know, do you have options for the average regular person? I think we've seen a lot of people travel close to home. So I think in terms of the economic, I think people want to travel. They want to experience um more destinations and I think people want to travel closer to home at the moment as well. So I think, you know, are we priced? I, when I look at the other resorts in Canada in Canada and even Nova Scotia, which is really where I look, I think we're priced quite reasonably. I don't want to sort of get into the economic, you know, where, where your income level should be. I want us to be accessible. Um, so I think we're priced quite well going into the future. Um, we've got a lovely product and a product that's changing and growing. Um, pricing and my gut feeling is pretty good. I think um, it can be as expensive as you want. Um, I I think we're fair. So I think, and if you want to know about our target market, we're looking at people really th- at, for the winter, and it changes a little bit over the year, but for the winter, it's most probably a three-hour drive from the resort, which takes us up to maybe Truro. We're looking at the St. John's New Brunswick market as well, and possibly some Atlantic Canada. Um, But that's sort of the winter business, you know, and there's also going to be meetings and events, special occasions, maybe some winter weddings, maybe a team building, maybe a Christmas party. Those are the sorts of markets, I think. But once we get into, you know, the busy season, which is really end of April to most probably mid-October, then it's a it's a whole different market. And it's, it's international, and it's Nova Scotian, and it's Atlantic, and it's Canadian, and it's Quebec. Um, we've seen people from the UK and Germany come this year and love it. So it's it it does change and it changes with the seasons as well. But you know, winter's going to be is going to be new experience for us all in terms of who comes. Um, but imagine coming here for the winter and you know, two or three nights in a cozy cottage with the fire burning. We'll deliver you a hamper of snacks so that when you arrive and drop your bags, you can open a bottle of wine and have some popcorn and chips and charcuterie board and you can cozy and order room service and most probably have a fondue or a lovely bowl of soup and grilled cheese sandwiches and beef bourguignon and scallops. I mean, there's a whole room service menu designed for the winter, which is going to be quite amazing. So I think people want, want a break. They want to change. They want an experience. And I think that's where we focus on providing them. From. And whether it's for just a family, a group of friends or a small you know, a business meeting or a Christmas party. That's going to be how it is for the next few months. And I, I think you hit on the word that I was looking to describe, which was experience. So I think, you know, as a as a older individual myself, I'm not going to date myself too bad, but, um, you know, sometimes when you go to a, a hotel, it, it's just a place to stay. I, I'm, I'm just parking overnight. Yeah. I got to head out the next day. I just need a clean room and some hot water and I'm fine. But if I'm going away and, and, and I'm going to park myself for a weekend, um, I'm looking for something that's going to give me that experience. And with the pines, it, it does resonate for us that are local as being an experience generating uh, a place. So what sort of amenities does the Digby Pines offer now to kind of generate that extra experience? You went through some of the food options and now we're hungry. Uh, but yeah. what are, what are some of the other amenities other than golf? Cause everybody knows about the golf, but other than that, uh, you know, what, what other things are there that that'll enhance the experience? Yeah. Well, let's not underestimate food because Nova Scotia and it started in Halifax about seven years ago. The food boom in Nova Scotia is amazing. Um, in terms of golf, golf is, is go to Dayton, but we've just purchased a golf simulator. So anyone that plays golf will be able to continue to practice their swing throughout the winter. You can book one hour, two hour, up to four hours. You can then, if you want to learn to play golf, this is a great time to come and book time with our golf pro. And you can learn on the golf simulator. This is state-of-the-art technology. It's it's cameras, it's videos, it's golf balls, and you can learn to play golf. It's something that I'm even thinking of going to do, you know, maybe an hour every week or every other week. I think that's yeah, practice awesome. up over the winter so you'd be all set for when the season ups. 
The spa is going to be open year-round, which is amazing. We've got this beautiful outdoor pool that remains heated between 75 and 80 degrees throughout the year, and that temperature will remain constant through the winter. And it's going to be amazing. But what we are going to do in the winter that's a little bit different for resort guests when you stay, you will have to book a time slot because with winter, it's going to be colder, it's going to be snow, you're going to have more clothes, maybe you're going to have a coat on you. And so you don't want to be down there with 30, 40 people. So we'll most probably limit it with a small charge and you'll need to book a time. And that means maybe two or three families can be there at a maximum time. And it will mean people will get real enjoyment out of being there. So the pool's going to be a big attraction, we think. It's going to be lovely. And if you want to use the pool and then go to the spa, you can use the sauna and the steam room there, which is just a lovely experience. Now, at the same time, we've got things happening for Thanksgiving. We've got things for um, Halloween. We've got a whole Christmas program that we're just finalizing at the moment. We're talking about Santa's Cave and different activities for people. And we're going to be doing a whole lot of promotions of different events, whether it'll be a, a night in Paris, for, which will be centered around food. We might do a comedy evening and encourage people to come and stay for the night or two nights. Um, we're going to try and encourage groups of people to come for Christmas. We'll do special parties for them. There's going to be walks around. Um, and then we're going to have lots more activities for people to do. And even things down to we're talking about at the moment, which we're about to finalize, is how to make four Christmas cocktails with very straightforward ingredients in your kitchen. Or we get, you know, you might have to go and buy one special spirit. But what do you do for Christmas? And we get to run classes like that. Someone's approached me, could we do a pop up craft fair for two days? So these are all the discussions that are happening at the moment. The best way to find out, and this is my little plug, is sign up to the Digby Pines newsletter on the Digby Pines website, and you will guaranteed to be given a $25 resort credit if you sign up when you come and stay with us. That's my only plug. Now that the world has opened up and, and moving, most travel restrictions uh, uh, around the globe have, have been lifted, did you find you had... Uh, because uh, I know people, were, everyone was relieved, and they just wanted to get out and start traveling again. Did you find you had this sort of a, a rush or an influx of uh, of uh, calls to your booking center? We certainly, um, I think, from the overseas people coming in, I do think the out Canada's COVID restrictions, and I do think they were correct. But now that they're lifted, the United Kingdom becomes a very big market for the UK again next year. Because I, I do know that the UK market was very reticent about traveling to Canada. Um, so I think there is going to be a huge upside next year with other international countries wanting to come in and travel again now. So I think it's going to be very positive. I mean, Nova Scotians have managed the whole pandemic very well. We saw that always because we've always kept in touch and we've always looked from the outside in while we were in Ontario. Um, but I think we're through that. And I think... Um, there's still a few people a little bit worried about COVID and want to wear their masks, and that's absolutely fine. Again, we'll never discriminate, and we'll encourage people to feel safe, and we'll, we continue our protocols. You know, we continue using the strong chemicals that we use, which you don't smell by the time you check in, but we keep our sanitation standards really high. Um, and those are things that we can't let go behind the scenes to look after our guests when they come here. So, yeah, I think it's going to be positive. I think given what we've seen this year and if we see another year like that next year and the international start coming in, we could see a very positive revival of, Nova, of travel to Nova Scotia, which is what this province continues to need. And now that we open year round, we become another economic driver for more business, more jobs. Um, it's going to be a very exciting time. So from a demographic point of view, uh, Charles, are you seeing a lot of um, staycation versus rest of Canada versus international. What's what's been your mix over the last year? And look, I've only been here three months, so I'm not going to. I'm going to be really honest and say I can't give you great detail um, because I can't. And I mean, I'd need to say, look, I'll research that and come and talk to you another time. Um, Atlantic Canada has driven us a lot this year. I think it will change a little bit next year. I think we'll start to see more Ontario and Quebec. I think that's, um, and New Brunswick is, again, a huge potential for us because that ferry is only two and a half hours away um, and it's a lovely opportunity for people. But I, I've been, we've been talking to some clients in Wolfville and Kentville and New Minus and I was speaking to a car dealership the other day and it's like, oh, they said, we've got about 15 people. Maybe we'll come for Christmas, come and do a Christmas party and we'll bring partners and stay a night. 
brilliant. So again, there's also markets like that that are waiting to be un, uh, to tell people that we're there and we can do opportunities like that. And they're thinking, this is great. I'll come down, 25 people, we'll have a great dinner, we'll have a night, everyone can relax, no one has to worry about drinking and driving. So there's also very much a local market that I want to work with as well and, and be approachable for the locals close by. Talk to us. I mean, I just to digress, this is where the market's changing. I had uh, I had coffee with two guests at the resort on Sunday. Two women in their 70s. They love coming here. They're here at least every month. They're planning to bring 20 people here on the 26th of December for three nights. And they want to have a dinner and they want to have fun. And they, they're writers and they want to sit and read and write and talk to each other. And like, what a fantastic couple of days or three days they're going to have. And I said, well, let's put a special dinner together with a special menu and make it a little bit festive. And they sort of thought it would be nice to let everyone do what they want for Christmas Day, but then people want to know what to do after Christmas. So that's a bit exciting talking to these two wonderful women the other day. And I was like, we got to work on something together to make it fun. And they said, oh, I said, I'll put a special rate together that you won't be able to get on the internet. You know, sometimes you just got to ask and tell us we've got a group and we'll do something for you. We'd love to have you here. I know from, from my own personal experience that it was just great to get out of the house. Um, I've, been, I've been working from home since before COVID. Um, actually, the, the company I work for, we were renovating a, uh, our office space, and so we were running out of spots to be. So I ended up volunteering to work from home for a little while, and then, of course, COVID struck, and that just kept me there. Uh, but um, I was really glad just to get out of the house. And, I mean, we haven't had a Christmas party, if, you know, for our office for the last two years. So certainly, you know, let, let's go. <laughs> let's get give out. Me, let's have a party. Get, get someone to give me a ring and let's make it a reality for you. It'd be fun. Yes. No, I, I definitely will. I'll, I'll be talking with my uh, office manager uh, later today about it and just see what we're doing. And, and that's the thing is that, you know, uh, people have to get back into the mindset that, Oh, it is opened up. All right. Now, now I've, you know, I haven't gone anywhere in the last two years. I, I may have saved a few bucks for my vacation. Now, what, now what am I going to do with it? I don't, I, I personally, I'm not looking forward to jumping on a plane anytime soon. So I'm looking to stay, I'm looking to stay around and, and find something to do, but you don't have to go to the city. You don't have to go too, too far. There's plenty right in the backyard. Now here's a crazy idea which I don't quite know how to put all the marketing together. But if, And look, because I'm on your podcast, if anyone wants to contact me, they just have to ask for Charles at the Digby Pines. But if you've got a family and you've got kids that um, have got, you know, that, and I don't know what you call it in Canada, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, Chris Kringle, St. Nick. But if you, want to drop your presents, if you want to drop your presents off for the family or you want to drop, you know, Santa's presents, Santa's sacks for the kids, then talk to me and we'll make something magic happen. Sometimes it's about, you know, don't be afraid to contact me and say, hey, we've got this idea. Can we make it happen? It doesn't, ha and it doesn't have to be crazy or outlandish. It's just maybe making something that's a little bit different or taking the pressure off someone. And with a little bit of planning, you know, the day before we can't quite do the magic. But if you come to us and say, hey, I've got this idea. We've got 10 of us coming. Can we do this, this, and this? We'd love to have the opportunity to try and make it happen for you. And you know that's customer service. That that and that's yeah. something that's been missing for for a long time. So kudos to you and your staff uh, for being willing to make that happen. Yeah, Charles, the Digby Pines is in a perfect location. You've got the Fundy Rose, the ferry terminal uh, just down the road, uh, not far from Garmouth, uh, with the the Cat Ferry, and you know. I might be a bit biased, but, you know, I think situated in the most beautiful part of, of Nova Scotia. And I'm sure that's something that, that, uh, that you promote as you're, as you're uh, um, communicating with your guests and your staff too, right? Hey, and that cat ferry is critical for all of our, you know, from Yarmouth, for Digby, for Annapolis Royal. That's, the cat ferry is critical for our future. Um, and make sure, you know, you have my full support of anything I can do to support that. Um, and we see a huge opportunity for tourism, you know, even next year. I mean, they've just started this year and they've had a good year, but it's going to get bigger and bigger for us. And I think that's just so good for the area. As you know, the uh, uh, both the uh, Premier and uh, Transportation Minister have uh, 
uh, said some pretty unsettling things about the future of the cat fairy. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I think if you go to make a criticism, you've got to have another solution. And that's what worried me. And someone should be, I'm not talking about the, their politics, but if you go to say something might not work, you better have a plan to tell us what will work. And I think that was the disappointing thing about the communication. They made a sweeping statement and they hadn't thought it through. Um, so they need to look at who's, you know, how they craft their message. Because if you take something away, what are you going to replace it with? So let's say the, the cat fairy generates a million dollars over the season. So if by chance you're going to say, well, maybe we'll review it. But if you go to review it, what are you going to replace that money with? And I think that's a lot of where politicians in general make mistakes is they want to make statements and then they have to backtrack instead of going, how can I present things as a solution, not as a problem? So I see that more as the issue as opposed to what the politics are. Um, but again, they're new in their role. Um, but they've done a few things. Yeah, it doesn't mean to say I don't disagree or agree with them. I think they've just got to get some the, the, the right advisors around them. Um, but I, I, I think it was misguided and I will fight every tooth and nail with anyone any organization in the area to keep that cat fairy. And we'll write it there. Um, otherwise, tell me what the new economic driver is that's going to replace that money into the community. That's my question, and that's the question that wasn't being answered. You make some very good points, Charles. Um, I know that the uh, Digby Pines has always been a, a really perfect spot for corporate getaways and uh, uh, retreats and recharging batteries and all of that, or, or conferences, um, you know, that all came to a stop a couple of years ago, but now things have started up. So how um, how is that working out? Are you getting more businesses, uh, you know, corporations getting in touch, say, hey, we got, you know, 50, 60 people, we'd like to, you know, maybe spend a weekend or a few days? Absolutely. We've, got, we've already got some Christmas parties booked. We've got some retreats. Um, there's plenty I mean we've got a retreat over the next three days for the hotel and they've taken over most of the hotel it's pretty exciting and they're, they've come back with 250 people and they're going to have an amazing time um, so again this, it's just telling people we're out there and give us a ring um, and if you if they feel comfortable ask for Charles because we we it has to be, and you touched on it earlier, customer service. You have to be able to talk and listen to people because you, you can give them packages to their, you know, but you've got to say, well, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? Look, we're looking, we're working with people on yoga retreats next April and May, which is exciting. Um, I can see, as I said earlier, the Christmas parties where we're speaking to different businesses. We're talking to the curling club. We might have some hockey teams come to stay. You know, again, it's it's broad. And, I mean, one of the things Digby Pines needs to be, and you talked about the target market, it also needs to be accessible. It needs to be to all groups and people here yeah, have a wonderful time um, and come up and experience it. Um, but, again, a lot of adults, a lot of couples are here more than I haven't seen as many children as I think we might in the future. It really sounds, Charles, like uh, you and everyone at the uh, at the Digby Pines are really going back to the basics of of that of customer service, that face to face. Because I, you know, I've I've stayed at hotels when I went to news directors conventions around the around the country, and it's you know, here's what we have, and if you don't like it, you know, too bad, kind of a thing. My uh, uncle owned the El Rancho Motel here in Yarmouth many years ago for years, and 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 you know, again back to those basics you know how was your stay how how is your stay going what can we do for you you know and and that's what you're doing isn't it yeah and providing the the customer is clear and fair in their communication you know we can do most things and if we know about it when it's happening not after when it's finished makes all the difference and it's like tell us as it's happening or because we will all make mistakes in all our business units you know what i mean we won't respond fast enough the invoice i mean i sent off a request for an invoice last night i'm still waiting it should have been sent by now it's i shouldn't have to wait for an invoice to be sent from a computer from a big company but you do so you know if you talk to us and the biggest challenge is when things go wrong come and tell us as it's happening 
don't leave it till after you've left and then feel be upset. We can try and fix things while you're here, but we need to know about it in real time. I, I think that, you know, that's a key thing too, because in the world of social media and, you know, uh, people are used to, to just jumping online and venting as opposed to talking to other people. And I mean, I remember an age old adage, I don't remember where it came from, but you know, if you're, if you're happy about your, your experience, tell everybody, but if you're not happy, tell us. And you know, that's, that's the thing, but people will, will have a tendency to just jump online and, and go through that. Oh. And it does be annoying because words, my mother said, don't ever put anything in writing. You don't want to come back and haunt you. Um, the internet have, is forever. Yeah. And we understand some people are more comfortable with that, but I, my message to anyone that's coming up here, tell us in real time. Yes. That's who we are. That's my philosophy. Um, and, if you need to complain, tell us calmly and give us a chance to fix it instead of, you know, and then we'll, we'll everything can be done calmly and correctly. That's right. That, that's what we're trying to do. And we'll make mistakes. But now they all know that Charles is here. You know, and one of the things too, of course, a lot of people are booking online. And, you know, the unfortunate part about that is that you don't get you don't get the opportunity to say, Hey, I got an idea. That's not really a field in your online booking arrangement. So again, as, as Gary mentioned, going back to the roots of customer service, you know, being able to call in and talk to you and say, Hey, I, I'd like to try to do this. You're not going to get that opportunity trying to book online. So oh, yeah. And I agree. And one of the things we're looking at doing, um, which I think is something is, which is a resort international practice. And we're going to bring in, next year or we're starting to try to internally and then we go to build the systems is we actually want to reconfirm everyone's reservation by phone in the future nice now that's not happening right now but that's something that we have started to look at we're just coming through the high season we'll use the winter to start putting in the systems that we so maybe you book three weeks three months in advance we ring you a week before you come and say hey you know we notice you haven't booked golf or the spa or dinner would you like to book? Is there anything you need to know? You said you weren't coming with children or a dog. Are you? Has that changed? And just we're looking at ways of how we can build that communication. And I think um, a lot of sales in the world is reactive. I'm trying to think of solutions for the resort as a team that we can be proactive. And hopefully by that next year, when we ring you and we say, hey, you're coming, we start that communication. Then the get, by the time the guest comes, they go, oh, well, the resort's already contacted us. They're open to talking to us further. Again, building the experience, and that's what's going to make the difference. And the experience starts right at the booking. How important is it, Charles, uh, for you in your position as uh, VP of Ops to keep that constant communication with your uh, employees, you know, whether it's servers, bartender, you know, groundskeeper, housekeeping, because they're in constant contact with the, uh, uh, with the customers as well. So, you know, how do you manage that within your time to keep that communication open because they may see something or hear something and want to say, Hey, Charles, somebody mentioned this and I just want to pass it on to you. One of the big things I've changed or, my style is an open door policy. So as I was telling you before we got on, jumped on the podcast, I put another door in my office. So it's literally, a, you can go come in from the guest side or my staff can come out the back without having to go past all the guest areas. So there's a very much an open open door policy. And that open door is not where I, you know, um, it's where I'm completely available. And often my day will have so many interruptions for those reasons where you talk about that staff can come in and just talk and it's like come in and sit down and tell me two to three minutes and then what can we do and we move on now at the same time i'm trying to walk the resort most days and say hello to people or if i see someone it's like um we talk to them and, and then it's it's i see myself more as a conductor of the orchestra so like what i'll do next week is i've been dying to go around the golf course it's an 18 hole stanley thompson designed golf course so dawson who manages all the maintenance of the golf course is going to take me out on the golf cart and drive me over all the 18 holes and then i'll we'll time it so i get to meet his team and we'll do different things like different activities um on thursday morning we've got so many people i'm making coffee downstairs in the restaurant for i only been told i need you for two hours to make coffee so 
so again, I'm connecting with the staff. Do you know I mean, I've got a lot of other work to do, but there has to be that time for for interacting with people because it's the staff that lead lead the customer service satisfaction. And you know, apart from the morning meetings and department meetings and agendas, you know, it is wa- it is walking around and saying hello to people. Um, today I met Mark, and he's originally from the United Kingdom. He's been here eight years. He's a permanent resident applying for his citizenship. He works in our housekeeping department. I actually hadn't met him. I mean, I've only been here three months and there's 160 staff, so there's still a few that I haven't got round because he's always on different shifts. And yet, um, and the other thing I do is I come and stay in the hotel about every two or three weeks for a night in a different room or a different cottage. So that gives me a, and um, I gathered a couple of us stayed in the cottage and we came up with all these new ideas because we started to look at it from a fresh perspective. So there's lots of little things I'm doing to try to keep relevant and make the staff feel that they can approach and help. Um, yeah, one of the staff came to me the other day and said he had overheard a guest conversation and they were going to let off fireworks on the resort. And this was around the time of fireworks. And so that piece of information was a safety and security piece that we could check, make a discreet inquiry with them and make sure where they were going to do it and that it was going to be done safely. Now, we it was a very sensitive situation, but again, we do a lot of, one of the biggest things that my human resource manager has done, Jill, is implemented very strong um, health and safety committees and representatives from each department. And we try and we're really focused on protecting the guests, the staff, and the resort itself. So there's a lot, and I can't do it all alone. I'm building my team to do more of it with me. So many businesses are really struggling, particularly in the hospitality and food service uh, industries. They're struggling to get employees. A lot of businesses, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but a lot of businesses here have been, you know, they've had to cut back hours. Sometimes they've had to close for, for a day or two. Um, what's the situation at the Digby Pines in regards to that? We did bring in foreign workers. We brought in about 20 foreign workers. We've had some Ukrainians, and there's a Ukrainian job fair. But I think a lot of industries, the the pandemic's shaken everything up. And again, we've got to start, again, teaching young people that this is a career. We sort of lost two or three years of momentum. And that was pretty hard on many, many industries. So again, it's forcing us to look at you know rates of pay, leadership, um, and starting to educate young, young people. And it starts, you know, what are we doing now to the 14, 15-year-olds and telling them because we've also got to take a short-term approach and a long-term approach and some of it's saying you can have this amazing career and start talking to people about that i think for us one of the things in our favor i hope is that we're going year round and we will build a core group of um, trained staff that will carry the resort year round that's going to build um that instead of opening for six months and closing for six months suddenly we're going to have a team of people that will form that leadership and supervisory skills that will be able to pass it on to the next generation. So for us, I think that's a little bit unique. Um, No, it's challenging. I think people need to, I still think the minimum wage is quite low in Nova Scotia. I think that's very real. Um, We've got a housing issue. We could handle a little bit more immigration. So there's a lot of areas and it's just not one thing. Um, I'll try and do what I can as a leader and, and, work with my owners and try and and the more money we make the more money we've got to invest that's what they told me and investing is not just in the property it's also in people we're looking now at more training so we're looking for bartenders we're looking we're in initial discussions with Nova Scotia Community College to do um, mixology training for them specific for our resort and we'll pay for that for them if they commit to us for a, a year or 18 months we're looking at a whole lot of pilot schemes where we can say, we'll, we'll invest in you. And what a great uh, thing for a young person to have on their resume that they worked at the Digby Pines, I think. I hope so. And look, I'm still new and I've still got a lot to do. So give me another three to six months to settle in. Um, and yeah, but I, I wanna, I'm thrilled to be here. I love it. It's an amazing resort. The owners are investing. You know, we've got a new roof. We've got a new heating ventilation system. We've got new carpet. We've got big projects for the future. Um, every six months, there's going to be more changes here, and they've given me a lot of. They've got a lot of belief in me, and I'm very grateful for that. And I love it. I love Digby. I loved coming down to Yarmouth. You know, I want to get to know Clare and Weymouth and all these areas. 
that's all part of us. So hopefully it all works and we'll be talking again in the future. So I was just going to ask as a, as a closing comment, um, what can you share with us that's on your that's on your slate for the next six months, next year, two years, and so on? What, what have you got plans for? Okay, so um, we finished the heating, ventilation, and cooling system in the whole hotel. That we finished at the end of November. New carpet in all the bedrooms will be finished by the end of November. We start the um, we want to start looking at the bathroom design and the room design. Being a government resort, the furniture was pretty stale and boring. So <laughs> that's politically correct statement. Yes. <laughs> so things like even if we put the TVs on the wall, we're going to change the whole illusion of space. You know, one of the challenges people say. The rooms are small, but then like 93 years ago, A, they built this hotel never to fall down, which you could never afford to build today. No. And, uh, and the rooms look small. They really aren't by international standards. But we can put the TVs on the wall. We can do custom furniture. We can have floating shelves, floating desks, slimline fridges, those sorts of things in the future. So there's a lot for us to do. The owners have only had it for two years. Um, and we're winterizing it and we're making it, you know, a great place. I think the cottage experience is going to become quite amazing with this new room service menu we're going to launch in November. Um, and I think, you know, it, come for two nights, bring your pet, go for walks, hikes. There's going to be, a, and we're going to have a lot of activities. One of the things we've done, my staff and I, we've just made a list of 25 things to do in the area. And it's our list. It's not necessary. So we also want to be able to give, get, you know, Official information, and we want to have some of our own as well. So, again, it's giving them more and more activities and more and more things to do when they come here, if they want. Some people just want to chill. Yeah. I, I mean, that's one of the things for me. It's, as much as working from home has been has been great and a bit of a cost savings as well, I'd like to be able to dis, disconnect and relax. Yeah. No. And I think if you bring your, 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 your company here, well, not your company, but the company you work with, for a Christmas party, we can do something and, and make you relax and have a wonderful time. And you can just connect and connect about Christmas and celebrating that you can travel again. Yeah, exactly. For a couple's romantic getaway or a, you know, family vacation or business, uh, how can folks get a hold of the Digby Pines? Go to the website and there's the free phone number there. And if you want to talk to me, ask for Charles. Um, and send us an email. If you don't get a response for whatever reason, I mean, we're on all, all social media platforms, Facebook, Google, let us know. Um, we're pretty good. Occasionally, we all have to have a little bit of patience, but we're definitely trying to be accessible. Um, I would like to say we're 100% perfect all the time, but we're not. No business is. And that would, be, <laughs> that would just be a fallacy. But we're there, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll deliver. Take a chance, www.digbypines.ca and get your $25 resort voucher to come and stay with us. Charles, we thank you so much. It's been a real delight chatting with you. Great. I've loved it. I'm Gary Nickerson. And I'm Quinn Taggart. And this has been Outside My Window.